your thoughts on Umbrella Academy and Captain Marvel versus kicking the shit out of Thanos in Avengers Endgame. I'll be repeating some things from last video, but I'll be elaborating more, and they, des they deserve to be repeated. At the beginning of every Umbrella Academy episode, the title Umbrella Academy shows up on some object in the room, like a dish, or anything really randomly in the background. That is exactly what the show Legion did. So either Umbrella Academy stole it, or they just were not original. More likely that they stole it though, because it was recent and it was great. Again, this show steals everything it has. By the way, there's going to be spoilers. Episode 1 of Umbrella Academy. They show each character in a different room of the mansion, and then they zoom out, not even zoom out, they they cut to a cross section of the map mansion showing everybody in the house separately doing their thing, almost like a dollhouse. This was taken from The Life Aquatic, uh, where they show everybody on the submarine and then they show a cross section of the submarine. This was clearly stolen. Uh, there's a lot of scenes, not a lot, but there's some scenes in Wes Anderson m movies where it'll show all the characters walking in a straight line, single file, and it'll show them sideways. It, it's quirky. Uh, I know he did that in, in um, Royal Tenenbaums, if not others. And again, they stole that. And it gets on my nerves a little bit to think that People, younger people who are watching this show who have never seen a Wes Anderson movie might be watching Umbrella Academy and thinking how clever it is to be doing things like this. I shudder to think that that's what every show does these days. That's what we've come to. They just steal great ideas from previous people. They get all the credit because younger people haven't seen it done when it was originally done. We've all been victims, we've all been, uh, you know, guilty of being the naive young person. I grew up watching The Simpsons, not realizing certain jokes were taken from the Three Stooges, blah, blah, blah. But, you certainly should, you should want to know that these great, these great groundbreaking shows didn't actually break any ground at all. And again, ever since Guardians of the Galaxy, every single effing... Uh, superhero show if not every show period pop show has to have music in the background funky music in the background and people dancing and it's supposed to be cute and hip and it doesn't work at all in this fucking disaster of a show every time a, a song ended I was waiting for the next one to chime in without any silence in between and usually it would be, you know, a slow classical song and then a punk rock song or a, a loud song and then a quiet song and then a loud song. As if silence is death, death, right? I heard a review that said that the dialogue basically doesn't offer any new information and that's absolutely true. You could pretty much watch the whole thing on without any dialogue at all and you would pretty much know exactly what's going on. You would know who's related to who and how. Uh, you would know who the villain is, everything. There's nothing necessary at all uh, to be conveyed through words. And that isn't necessarily a bad thing, unless you throw words in there out of insecurity and have them just... Uh, and you know, people are actually like that. They'll, uh, they'll talk just to avoid silence. And it's, it's ugly. Just have, have silence. Yeah, it's more awkward more uncomfortable but it's more respectable and it has more rewatchability and I'd rather listen to somebody who's only going to talk when they have something to say rather than going on about nonsense hey do you like this orange juice I like this orange juice it's pretty good orange juice are, are you thirsty I get thirsty sometimes yeah so uh anyways like well you know what's new with you oh um so, uh, you feel like watching TV? Uh, this show is basically... I'm on episode 8, so I'm not done yet. So something miraculous might happen to redeem the whole thing. 
but as of as of yet the whole show is a big non-event nothing ever happens they don't even have cliffhangers which is interesting to me because you'd think that they would resort to something that works that well I mean there's nothing wrong with a cliffhanger but no it's it's nothing it's almost like you can't even talk about it because nothing happens I'm not sure when that comic book was written but Heroes had the same premise of the end of the world in eight days. So, I mean, and not that it's it's that original of an idea anyways. It's not like Heroes was the first to think of it. But still, I mean, the, the similarities between this show and Heroes are too much, given that not that t- much time has passed since uh, Heroes. And... Somebody's to blame. I don't know who it is. Maybe Heroes copied this comic book. Maybe this this comic book copied Heroes. Maybe the, the guys who created this show copied Heroes. Somebody's to blame. Every plot point is predictable. The, uh, the love interest, it was obvious that he was going to turn out to be a villain. Because why would you bring in a subplot of a love interest that doesn't tie into the whole thing? It actually would have been more clever if it didn't, but it does. And it was predictable. Another thing that was predictable was uh, the character who has no powers. Uh, I I said to my friend, watch, she's going to end up having the greatest power out of all of them. Yeah, and she does. Uh, There was a thing where the mother, they're all fighting and the mother's sweeping in the background or vacuuming or something. And I'm like, oh yeah, she's going to get shot in the crossfire and they're only going to find out at the end of the scene. And yeah, yeah, that's what happened. Nothing is surprising on this show. There's no... It's like the opposite of Breaking Bad where I could never predict where it was going to go. It always surprised me. At my best, I could never predict Breaking Bad. This thing, it's always... You know everything that's going to happen. I don't know if I've ever seen a show or a comic book idea that was so lacking in originality. I don't think there's one thing at all. I can't think of anything that's original. Oh, and uh, it's it's unrealistic. Uh, The development of the characters is very unrealistic. For example, a good example is Ellen Page's character is on medication to deal with, uh, I guess, severe emotional problems or something. And she goes off the medication and then, like, at the eighth episode, she starts going nuts and getting violent and shit, and you know having a nervous breakdown. But there was no lead up to that. She she went off the medication and, and she was total totally normal. She wasn't manic. She wasn't you know even though when she was happy, she wasn't extremely happy. She was just normal when she went off the the medication. And then uh, when the plot needed her to, she went all loony. And it was totally unbelievable. You don't even need to have experience with mental illness to know that people don't act like that. It was, you just, you wouldn't buy it. Also, she falls in love to an unrealistic extent in terms of how fast she does it. She starts out as this aloof person who's been alone her whole life. And then at the first sign of Dick, or whatever the hell it is that turns her on about this guy... Well, that's part of the problem. There is nothing to turn her on about this guy. And it's not like she wouldn't be having opportunities with men before this. Right? This this aloof misanthrope falls right into this guy's arms overnight. Haphazardly. I could could see them saying that uh, it's because she's off her meds that she's doing this. But she's not showing any signs of being irrational elsewhere. Uh, There are no villains as of yet. Every villain turns out to not really be a villain. They're all switching roles all the time. And that isn't necessarily a bad thing. We'll see where where that goes. But uh, two of the at first villains, two of the people set up to be villains initially, Mary J. Blige and the the guy, her, her co-worker, her partner in crime, They are ridiculously OP'd. They kick the shit out of all of the Umbrella Academy. um, And they don't have any superpowers, apparently. 
So that was just ridiculous. Uh, you know, have some kind of uh, method to th the madness of your show, right? Or, since you have a superhero show, dazzle us with their powers. Uh, I can't think of any impressive... None of them have done anything impressive so far. And we're at the 8th episode. We got the one guy who's good with knives. Okay, that's a... Wow, I've never heard of that before. It's not like Gambit and... Uh, Bullseye couldn't do that, or countless others, right? But that's his big power. He can throw a knife and hit where he's aiming. You don't even need a superhero to, to, superpower to do that. I mean, there's action movies where people can do that. They can do that on The Fast and the Furious. And then they got the guy with the gorilla body, and I guess he's just really strong. And, I mean, that's nothing The Rock can't do in The Fast and the Furious or any of his movies. There's uh, the girl that can lie to people and make them believe her lies, but she never uses that power, I mean, or if she does, it's, I didn't even notice, in, in eight episodes. And she had ample opportunity to do it, when she was being shot at, for example. Dude who can time travel, uh, again, heroes, dude who can time travel had great op, well, you know, don't bring up, don't even write a story with time travel, without really crossing your T's and dotting your I's. This kid, he never uses it appropriately guy who can talk to the dead has only used this power three times and it's never had any significance at all to the plot. None at all actually. Another good word for something this thing lacks is momentum. There's never any momentum. Uh, kind of reminds me of a Ryan Johnson movie like Looper where he just he has no sense of pacing at all. And, and that's what this thing has. No sense of pacing. You wouldn't know whether you're jumping in at the first episode or the eighth episode. Because nothing's gone anywhere, I guess. You could jumble them up. You could put the seventh episode for the second in place of the second. And it would probably work just as well. Finally, uh, the characters have no character. They don't develop. They have nothing interesting about them. The the one guy, Klaus, the only thing he does is make jokes all the time, but that's not really a character trait. That's just making jokes all the time. The serious guy, that's not a character trait. That's just serious. They don't have any traits. They don't develop. The, the biggest development is that the two that like each other, they dance by the seventh episode. I don't even think they kissed. Oh, and the one that does develop, the Ellen Page with the guy... Well, that one develops, that's two years of relationship in, in two days, where the rest of them are uh, two days worth of, of uh, development in two years. Again, somebody's to blame for this disaster. Uh, it might be just uh, modern times. It might be the producer. But yeah, somebody said, okay, you have to have uh, music all the time, just like Guardians of the Galaxy. You gotta have the titles like Legion, because that worked. Uh, you gotta have uh, Wes Anderson type shots as much as possible. Uh, they put in, the, 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 the black girl was originally white, but they changed her for uh, diversity. So you gotta have that. So you just, it's just a checklist, right? And there's nothing wrong with some of those things, but you're not gonna end up with a lot of uh, groundbreaking new, new shit. So this is where it's going. It's 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 nice, kind of, because I'm not missing anything. I'm going to finish it for the same reason I finished Dexter, even though Dexter went to shit after season one. I watched the whole thing. I'm going to finish watching season one of this just to see if it really is this bad. But I certainly... There's no way I'm going to watch season two because this is insultingly bad. Regarding my prediction that it will be Captain Marvel that delivers the final blow on Thanos, she gets the honor, I, I predict that she hits like a girl. And I want to repeat what I said about playing the diversity card, playing the race card, playing the gender card. You only get so many, and if you use them all up, there won't be any left for anybody else. There won't be any gender cards left for when you really need to play them, for when there's a movie or a person who needs to play it. 
Just like the race card. There's a backlash for everything when it's too overdone. Black Panther sweeping the Oscars, which might happen, right? It, let's say they give all the Oscars to Black Panther for everything, right? You know, all that means is that that the next one that tries will get skewered. Look what happened with the Ghostbusters movie, right? Like, uh, I remember in a... I mean, this is just publicity 101. Turn... You want to turn a fad into a trend. Um, you know, overexposure and they're done and nobody wants to see you again. Elvis Presley did the ultimate form of underexposure by dying. And he became a trend. You want to, you want to, you want something to have longevity, you don't kill it like this. Like, Black Panther's been killed. And, I mean, good luck for the next, uh, whatever, gender, uh, racial, um, superhero movie. Because, you know, Wonder Woman used that one up and Black Panther used up the race one. Uh, we'll see what happens with Wonder Woman 2. Yeah, that should honestly be pretty interesting. I can't really predict it. Same with Black Panther 2. How's that going to be received? Either it gets a free pass because it's Black Panther or Wonder Woman. So even if it's less than incredible, it'll still be flying high just like, you know, whatever Madonna or Lady Gaga did for a while. Get your foot in the door and then coast for the rest of your career kind of thing. This, uh, this, uh, SJW pro-diversity, pro-gender, uh, equality, uh, pro-gay, uh, thing that, that is, that Hollywood loves right now, it's not, it's not genuine. It's purely, it's purely related to money. That shouldn't be a surprise. It's not like Hollywood is known for its morals. I don't think that Black Panther or the, the diversity issue is uh, is nearly as bad with Black Panther as the gender thing is with such movies as Ghostbusters or, or what looks to be Captain Marvel. This would probably be because diversity has had more time in the spotlight and given more respect for a longer period of time. I think the woman, the women uh, gender thing is more at the point that the, the gender, the, the race, the diversity thing was at in the 80s when it was like every sitcom would have an episode where they would say you shouldn't judge somebody by the color of their skin or you know my friend's black is that okay dad that kind of crap and where it would be insulting to have a plot like that in a movie now where you know is it okay uh, to date a black girl, Dad? That would be ridiculous. That would be laughed at. And that's kind of where the women thing is. It's almost like, wait, women are people too? You're so, you're such a stupid man. How could you say something like that? Of course women are people too. That's where they're at. And, and when women are done properly, you'll know because you won't be laughing at them the way you were laughing at Admiral Holdo and uh, what's her name? The little one? Rose Tico. <laughs> if you support gays, click like. If you respect blacks, comment. If you think women are people too, click the notification bell. And if you care about sick children, subscribe.